Thursday again. We want to thank you for joining us on online. We want to welcome all our uh, online viewers and stay with us during this session. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the uh, what you have in store for us, the discussion for today. Thank you, Lord, for the worship team. Thank you, Lord, for the media team. Lord, we want to thank you even for the discussion this day. I pray that, God, you are going to minister to your people according to their needs. And, Lord, how privileged are we that, Lord, we you've invited us to partake in what you're doing in, in online, in the online space. We commit ourselves into your hands. And, Lord, in everything we do today, may it be for the glory and honor of your name. Lord, lead the, uh, us in the panelists and Lord, lead the worship team and the media team as we continue in this session. I pray that God will give our viewers and all those who are listening to us, Lord, clarity of mind to perceive that which you're saying to them. Thank you, Lord. And at the end of this, we'll give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome worship team. Hallelujah. Can I hear somebody give a shout of praise to our God? It's... Hallelujah. We are a chosen generation. We are a holy nation. We are a people belonging to God. Lord, we thank you and we bless you for this day. We thank you for being here with us, oh God. Can we just clap our hands before Jesus? Yeah. Father, we thank you. We bless you.
maker. He is the miracle worker. Lord, we bless you, Jesus. We thank you. Would you just join with me wherever you are? Wherever you are, wherever, wherever you're watching us from, and just lift your hands before God and declare by faith that we are healed. That we are healed. I don't know if you're sick in your body. Just lift your hands and by faith say that I'm healed in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, we lift our hands to you, Lord.
Wow. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. Indeed, we bless the Lord. He is the way maker. He is the promise keeper. He is the one who translates impossible into possibility. Many thanks, worship team, for leading us through that powerful session of praising and worshiping the Lord. And for our online viewers, we are still excited that you are following us from wherever you are. We want to take this opportunity moment to welcome you again to join our facilitators as we discuss on today's discussion topic. Most welcome. Dear viewers, we are excited that you're still following CA Bread Connect. Last week, we started a series that will take us through the next four to five weeks. And uh, we started a series that we titled Spiritual and Physical Ring. And therefore, uh, last week we were talking about altars. And this week, still on, under spiritual and physical ring, we are talking about covenants. We want to believe that uh, the Lord is working into your life, even as you are following us through the next uh, few weeks. Therefore, to guide us through today's discussion topic, on my right is our pastor, Patrick Kiprop. Most welcome to the program. Thank you, Abbefell. And on my left is our pastor, uh, Judy Carey. Most welcome to the program. Thank you so much, uh, Philip. Yeah, and therefore, just to start us off, I want our pastor, Patrick, just to give us an explanation, just a definition of what you understand about covenant. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Philip, and thank you, our viewers, for joining in today. Uh, well, uh, as you've heard, we are discussing uh, on covenants. And uh, let me just say, Elder Philip, that the word covenant is not a new thing. I think uh, it's in almost every culture and uh, more so we see also that in our religious circles and uh, in the Bible particularly we, we see that the God of the Bible is the God of covenants. But what are covenants? Uh, a covenant actually is a binding agreement uh, that two or more people come together to bind themselves uh, on a common cause, there is a particular reason why they are coming together as two groups or more than two, more than one, and they bind themselves on a common cause. And uh, covenants have its own characteristics. Like for example, each covenant should have uh, terms and conditions. Just like when we see in products, when when a company. Uh, enters like into an agreement with the with the with the consumers of their products. They have terms and conditions. In the same manner, also covenants have the same uh, have the same characteristics. They have terms and conditions of the covenant. So where by um, the party say uh, we are committed to this cause, and my part of the of of the covenant or of the uh, agreement is this and your part is the other the other thing but uh, covenants are more deeper than agreements in that um, uh, like in the Bible a covenant would would, would entail uh, aspects of sacrifice uh, so there should be a sacrifice more than uh, the, the the agreement and the, the, the laws or the rules the terms and conditions that there is also a sacrifice that 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 is that that uh, that entails that um, also when it comes to covenants especially in the bible you realize that uh, covenants also add other symbols like uh, the covenant between god and abraham there was the changing of name uh, that means actually it, it was something much deeper it went to an extent of changing your name. Uh, it, it's also common, like in the marriage covenants these days, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the lady, yes. mm, the bride, the bri uh, the, the, that is now the, 
the, the bride the bride the bride yes yeah, the, the bride the, not the yes, bridegroom yes. the bride changes uh, the name. their names yes because they've entered into a marriage covenant mm. with somebody which will even affect their identity wow so covenants are very strong wow. binding legal agreements wow powerful quite enlightening let me hear also from our pastor judy what comes to mind when you hear about covenant when you when we talk about covenants mm. i think one of the uh, things that we need to establish mm. is that it's a serious kind of agreement when yes. two people uh, come make a covenant mm. It's not like a contract yes. or a simple agreement or uh, mm. a treaty. Yes. Covenants are more serious. Mm. They are more binding mm. and they are generational. Mm. When you enter uh, covenants mm. were entered not just on behalf of the in individual, yes. But on behalf of of of, of uh, uh, generations, yes, and on behalf of of people, many people, yes. For example, let's let's uh, an example of of a covenant in the Bible. For mm. example, yes, is is uh, the covenant between God and Abraham. Yes, and we see that vividly in the in the book of Genesis chapter mm. fifteen. Yes, where God. Uh, God had promised Abraham yes, a son yes. many years before mm. uh, before Genesis 15 mm. and Abraham asks God mm. are you really going to bless me with a, with a son and God mm. did not answer him instead yes. he asks him to come with animals mm. okay and a heifer a, a, a sheep Mm. some some doves mm. and we see abraham because this was covenants by the way uh, we don't when we see covenants in the in the old testament it's mm. not that's not the beginning mm. it's not like uh, abraham that was the first time he heard about covenants when god makes a covenant with him mm. this was a practice in the ancient Middle Eastern cultures. Mm. This is something that probably Abraham had participated in long yes. before God called him. Mm. Though with other gods, mm. of course, he was not a, wo a worshiper of Yahweh. Mm. So when God tells him, he knew what God meant when he said, come with animals, he knew mm. we are going, we are entering a covenant. I'm entering a covenant with God. Mm. And so he, he brings these animals. We don't see instructions. God mm. may have given him instructions, yes. but the, 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 the author of, of Genesis doesn't, uh, Moses doesn't tell us mm. that God gave him covenant uh, uh, instructions on what to do. But mm. we see Abraham coming and slaughtering these animals and dividing them, he divides them into two, yes. the carcasses, mm. and waits mm. for God to come and make wow. the covenant with him. Wow. And, uh, but it's interesting. It's mm. a very interesting story. You may want to read wow. in detail because Abraham waits for God and God doesn't turn up. Mm. He waits until he sleeps waiting. Mm. When he goes to sleep, he sees in a vision mm. God making a covenant with him. Mm. And we see, the, the Bible tells us that he saw a torch mm. go up and down mm. across Mm. In between the carcasses, he, he put mm. half of the carcass of, of the of the of the heifer on one side and mm. half of it on the other side yes. of the of the sheep on one side and half on the other side. Mm. But he didn't divide the 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 the, the, the birds. Mm. And we see a torch going up and down, and 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 Abraham understood what was happening. Wow! Wow! That uh, there was a covenant going on. That wow. God was making a covenant with him. Wow! And and we understand that you know as theologians that why that happened is because god didn't want abraham making promises wow. to him wow because god knew he's weak wow. and cannot keep a covenant mm. so this covenant uh, god made it wow. uh, alone yeah. 
because he was going to be faithful. Wow. Powerful, powerful. Quite enlightening. Godly co co covenant, I can, we can call it that. Right. Godly covenant. Yes. Yeah. Now, beside godly covenant, uh, Pastor Kiprop, what other covenants do we have? Well, uh, we, we have, as just the introduction mm. or the meaning of a covenant mm. uh, illustrated, yes. uh, it, it means that we might have other types of covenants. Yes. Uh, one, we, mm. we have the godly covenant. Yes. And what we mean by godly covenants, mm. this is a covenant between human beings mm. and God, Jehovah Yahweh. Yes. That's the God of the heaven. Mm. That's, the go uh, that's the God of the Bible. Yes. Uh, so we call that one godly covenants. Mm. And that's, for example, what Pastor Judy has just talked about, yes. the covenant between him mm. and the children and, and Abraham. Mm. There's also the covenant between God mm. and, and the children of Israel yes. uh, on Mount Sinai. Mm. Uh, that's where we have the Ten Commandments yes. coming in. Mm. So there was a covenant there. But mm. also in the New Testament, mm. we have the covenant uh, uh, between Jesus and the entire and the entire humanity mm. uh, that is the new covenant mm. and where jesus himself is the lamp of god who takes away the sins of the world yes so uh, that's the godly covenant mm. but we have the other aspect of uh, covenant which we call the ungodly covenant yes these are covenants which uh, are made between humans mm. and specifically with the devil mm. or with demons mm. So that is what we call the ungodly covenants. Mm. And this aspect, just like Judy said, yes. that the aspect of covenants uh, was something which was, uh, which was known by humanity. Mm. They didn't have to be told about it. Mm. So you realize as Abraham was, yes. when he was just called mm. uh, to, to bring the animals, he just mm. knew the next thing is a covenant. Mm. And, and that Thing has been common among uh, you know in all humanity really in yes. all history yes among tribes people mm. know how to make a covenant yes people would covenant like doing marriage covenants mm. they, they there is a way they did mm. but I would want to classify something about the ungodly covenant mm. and that is a characteristic of every other covenant yes there should be an implementing authority yes each covenant is subjected to an authority yes like for example you can go into a covenant a marriage covenant mm. and uh, as we know right now you can go into a marriage covenant in mm. the presence of a pastor mm. who is uh, who is who is uh, who is um, uh, who is authorized yes. to, to wed. Mm. You can do a marriage covenant in the presence of a, pro, uh, in the presence of a government official mm. who is also authorized to do that. Mm. There should be actually um, a governing authority uh, of any other covenant. Yes. That is the implementing agent mm. falls behind any other covenant. Mm. So when we are talking of ungodly covenants, mm. these are covenants which are made maybe between two people, yes. but the overseeing authority mm. behind there is not God. Yes. It may be demons, mm. it may be beliefs, and yes. other things mm. which are not necessarily of God. Yes. And another thing I would want to say, uh, a covenant may be classified as ungodly, are the terms and conditions. Yes. You may realize that some covenants will require uh, um, implementations of some things yes. which contradict the word of God. Wow. Now, some of the things may even require like, uh, um, uh, sexual immorality. Mm. Sexual immorality is involved as part of the making of the covenant. Yes. So, side things uh, I realize are actually things which may call, we may call ungodly. ungodly yes. Let me, uh, like for example, really bring in uh, in question the issues of circumcisions. Mm. Like among um, uh, the Kalenjins, the mm. people I know better, mm. you know, during circumcisions. Uh, uh, the rituals, there are so many other covenants that are done there. Yes. For those people who have gone through that, mm. you realize, well, it is cultural, but at the end of the day, you ask yourself, all mm. these covenants that are being done, mm. they are done 
to fulfill what. And there are some specific things which people are asked to do, like drinking alcohol. Yes. You know, that one is going against, specifically against the word of God, which, which is against the dr drunkenness. Mm. So people are introduced into alcohol, alcoholism mm. during such circumcision uh, mm. rituals. Mm. So you realize that the rituals, the things which are associated with the, with the covenants that we make, mm. uh, may either classify it as godly or ungodly. Yes. But circumcision by itself, as a covenant between God and Abraham, is not evil. Yeah. But now, what makes it evil is the, the accompanying rituals that accompany wow. Wow. circumcision. Wow. So that we call uh, now the ungodly, the ungodly. Um, covenant. Mm. And many people have actually entered into that. Mm. Like, for example, another example is the marriage uh, covenants. Yes. Among the challenges, we have the traditional way of marriage. Yes. And... Uh, the things which accompany that also are ungodly. Yes. So marriage by itself is a godly covenant. Mm. Mm. But the things which accompany mm. the traditional marriage makes mm. it an ungodly covenant. Wow. Wow. So, um, but we may have also something which uh, at times we may classify as secular mm. because uh, uh, many times we call it secular because it's not either. There's no deity that is like uh, mm. expressly mentioned yes. in that uh, ag ag agreement or covenant. Yes. So we may call it secular, but actually, as we know as theologians, mm. is that there's nothing sacred, there's nothing mm. secular. Yes. The whole world and everything that is in it yes. is either controlled by God yes. or either the devil. Yes. So there's nothing secular, there's nothing secular. Mm. Uh, so those we can just call secular mm. as, as, um, uh, as, as, as a term just. Mm. Yes. But uh, those are agreements yes. which people can come into Mm. like uh, binding agreements of friendship. Mm. You say uh, we've come into a covenantal uh, mm. agreement yes. that we, we are going to take good care of ourselves, yes. like David and, uh, and, and Jonathan, yes. for example, in the Bible. Wow. So those are the scenarios of uh, the, the covenants covenant. we may have. And uh, as you mentioned, secular, the overseeing authority uh, could be the law of the country or uh, a certain no yes, yes yes now in such a case we may have like uh, yes. the government yes you go into the presence of an attorney mm. and you make a covenant or mm. an agreement that is mm. binding it's yes. legal and it may also affect generations yes like for example if you have an agreement to sell a land yes. your generations will never own that land forever mm. it and will completely change hands from your hand yes. to the other person yes yeah and what we are seeing in the constitution you know things that um, can affect generations, you know? Yeah. Yes. I'm just understanding what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something about uh, about ungodly covenants being uh, witnessed in a, in a customary marriage, mm -hmm. circumcision, and we've seen cases where people bring items. Mm -hmm. Yeah? They bring items uh, which are symbolic mm -hmm. in nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps let me ask this, wait, let me ask Pastor Judy, yes. why do you think that these items that are symbolic are important in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in any given uh, covenant? And we're talking mostly about the ungodly covenant. Okay. Um, mm. As Pastor Kiprop has already alluded, yes. there are, you can tell mm. uh, whether the covenant is godly or ungodly mm. yes. by how it is done. Mm. Uh, many, many of, of, of the covenants that are ungodly, mm. which are mainly demonic, mm. involve things that uh, uh, go against godly values. Mm. For example, sexual liberality. Yes. The other one is, is off... Or, uh, like human sacrifice, yes. for example, where children are sacrificed, mm. that's ungodly. Mm. And, and um, these signify, uh, they are very significant, the items that are used. Mm. So, so, for example, uh, behind any ungodly covenant mm. is, is, um, is disobedience mm. against God. Mm. It's... Um, uh, what, what I want to use a stronger word, not mm. just uh, disobedience. Mm. It's um, 
you know going going against god in mm. a way that you you tell god to his face mm. that you against him mm. and the devil will use things yes. like sexual immorality and so mm. so it speaks mm. about the foundation of yes. that covenant yes okay yes that that, that it is betrayal against god yes uh, you know uh, that you you telling god i'm against you yes now mm. godly covenants mm. we see you know christ comes mm. as a, an object mm. that is used as a tool that is used to seal mm. the, our our covenant with god yes and and we are told that he is blameless mm. okay a, a, a lamp without any spot mm. purity to to speak about purity to speak about holiness yes so christ mm. and and the lambs that were used mm. even in the old testament yes. whether it's a heifer he, 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 yes the, the bible god says i i want i want spotless mm. to speak of the holiness of god mm. to speak about the purity of the covenant yes okay mm. so so we we see that that the the items that are used the mm. objects that are used to seal a covenant mm. have significance. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mean something. Wow. Yeah. I like that part of sealing. Yes. When these items are brought, they seal. Yes. For example, blood. Mm. Blood is used. Yes. Blood is the life. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and where life is, when, when blood is used, mm. It tells you the seriousness yes. of what you're doing. Yes. Now, this is not just a contract that you can break at will. Mm. Okay? That life has been lost. Yes. It, 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 so, so those, are, those are some of the things that are used wow. to see wow. wow. covenants. Wow, wow. Pastor Kipro, yes. what is the power of a covenant? Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, mm. Elder Philip. Yes. Uh, just like... Pastor Judy said mm. that covenants are powerful. Yes. They are more than a contract. Mm. They are more than just the symbol agreements. Mm. Though all agreements are binding, mm. but there is something that is so strong with a covenant. Mm. One is that a covenant mm. involves your entire lives. Mm. You don't make a covenant with with, with with a part of you mm. but involves the all of you yes for example when someone commits into a marriage covenant mm. your entire being mm. your entire life mm. is committed to that mm. and not only your entire life mm. the generations after that yes. are also affected by that covenant that you make mm. So, like, for example, the children who will be born out of that mm. covenant, mm. they will bear the name of the covenant. Yes. They will say the sons and the children of so and so. Mm. A lineage is developed from that. Yes, yes. Now, uh, covenants are strong in that and very powerful in that it affects your entire life. Mm. Not only, like, for example, if you enter into a covenant with with somebody mm. it will affect not only to the limit of the small part mm. but it affects including even your economy your wow. social life wow. and every other thing wow. but let me say this uh covenants have like what i may call lifespan mm. it has the it has it it has the area of operation mm. like for example each covenant should have its limits Yes. But where, where, where there are no limits, mm. that covenant will go beyond. Mm. And uh, let me say also that covenants are based on a legal foundation. Mm. It's something that's binding. Yes. And it will actually affect even the people yes. who are connected to that person who made that mm. legal agreement. Yes. Like, for example, if I sell land, just mm. let me use this, though yeah. that's not as strong as the covenant we're yes. talking about. Mm. Like, let's talk of the covenant between God and Abraham. Mm. You know, that covenant was so strong. God made between Abraham 
and God. Mm. But that thing affected the generations and the children that came after Abraham. Yes. And God was obligated and said, as I made this with your father, mm. then I have to be faithful because this covenant I made to wow. Abraham and wow. even now to the seed of Abraham, wow. this covenant still stands. Wow. So wow. covenants are really, really powerful. They are powerful. One, they affect generations. Wow. So not only the godly covenants, but mm. also the ungodly covenants. Wow. The covenants we make with demons mm. will affect even our children. Wow. If we offer our families, if we offer our lineage to Satan, mm. the same, same covenant we make with demons mm. will affect our children. Wow. That and that powerful. is why they are very serious. Wow. Yes. Wow. Pastor Judy, what comes to mind when you are talking about covenant being powerful? And you can mention this as a final remark as well. Covenants are, are powerful mm. because um, when you see in the, in, in the, in the, in the Bible, mm. what, by the way, when we talk about the Old Testament and the New Testament, mm. it's like saying the Old Covenant and the New, and covenant. The new covenant. That's what Testament means, yes. covenant. Yes. And we see that in the Old Testament, we see that God made covenants. Mm. And if God is involved in it, Mm. You better know it's serious. Wow. wow. The fact that God is involved in covenants <laughs> it's serious. means these are serious things. Yes. Okay? And we see that God made covenants mm. with, 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 with Abraham. Mm. God made a covenant mm. with Noah. Mm. God made a covenant with, with, with David. Mm. And, and, and we see the power of those covenants. Mm. We see that like when God said to to, to David, mm. um, I'm, I'm making this covenant with you that they will never lack a person to sit on the throne. Mm. Okay? Yes. It's nobody in the throne of Israel. Mm. Do you know that uh, that throne mm. talks about Jesus? Yes. Jesus, we talk about Jesus being the, the son of David. Yes. And Jesus will finally sin, sit on the throne of David for eternity. Wow. 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 Okay. Wow. So covenants are very serious things that can change mm. the course of history. Wow. Okay. Yes. When people are, are keep mm. are faithful. Yes. And we see this uh, in, the, in the case of the children of Israel. Mm. When the children of Israel were faithful yes. to the way of, of, of Abraham yes. and Isaac and, and Jacob, whom mm. God had made covenants with. Yes. God kept his, his part of the bargain. Yes. And the children of Israel prospered. Mm. Prospered in every way. Wow. But when they broke, mm. do you know they were taken into captivity? They lost the land that wow. God had given them. Wow. And they went into captivity for 70 years. Yes. That means many of the children of Israel died yes. in captivity, yes. either in Babylon or yes. in, 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 in the, among the Assyrians. Yes. So that means a lot. Wow. It affects our lives. Wow. It, it affects every everything. Wow. Wow. And wow. we see, oh, okay, talking about our present day mm. because we, uh, we we can talk about what happened in the in the old testament and the new testament mm. and somebody can ask what does this mean for me mm. it means that you know in the new testament the bible says we are partakers we who are not yes partakers in in in, in what in, in the in what was happening to israel mm. Through Jesus, we became partakers in yes. the covenant between God and Abraham. Yes. And we are partaking in the blessings of Abraham mm. when we enter this covenant through Jesus Christ. When mm. we are, you accept Jesus as Lord and, and Savior, mm. his blood seals that covenant between wow. you and God. Wow. And we become partakers of, of the blessings of Abraham. Mm. Yes, it affects us. Wow. Yet we are also yes. partakers in other covenants, whether yes. we like it or not, mm. which our forefathers went into, our mm. our 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 ancestors went into as mm. Africans, as 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 for example, if you are a Kalenjin like yes. me, mm. you automatically enter into a covenant of the forefathers mm. where it which were done through circumcision, mm. through marriages, mm. and as Christians. Wow. 
when we come into Christ and we commit ourselves into yeah. Christ, yes, we wow. we break those covenants. We need to break mm. those covenants and and be partakers wow. of the covenants that wow. Christ Powerful. sealed Powerful. through His blood. Powerful. Now we've just introduced something, and I want my uh, our pastor Kiprop here just to make final comment on whether covenants. The ungodly covenants can be broken. And even as you're making that final com uh, comment, you will also be praying with our online viewers because some of them can just be going through what you're just about to mention. Thank you. I know our time is up. I just mm. want to respond to that in just a sentence. Mm. One is that um, laws are binding. Mm. And whatsoever law we subject ourselves into, yes, that law will affect us. Mm. Like the law of the land mm. will affect us. Yes. Now, when we subject ourselves into ungodly covenants, mm. that power, that law will affect us. The mm. consequences of the ungodly covenant will affect us. Mm. But there is something about laws. Yes. Uh, laws are, are never, ne never you, laws can may not be removed, mm. but laws may be sub suspended. Yes. What I mean is this. A higher law can be passed to suspend an existing law. Yes. You see that? Mm. There, there, a law can be established to overrun yes. an existing law. I'm hearing you. Now, like for example, there yes. could be a law that has sent somebody into prison. Mm. But there is another law also that, uh, that, that, that is in our land that a president can pardon. Mm. So a law put you in prison... But the law of the president can come and overrun mm. the law that put you in prison. Yes. Now, that is exactly what happens in life. Mm. We might have taken ourselves into prison, yes. into ungodly covenants, but there is the law of God. Yes. God is the supreme lawgiver. Yes. So the law of God can destroy and break the laws of our, the ungodly laws that we put ourselves wow. in. Yes. And that law comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And so our viewers... Uh, you might be going through a condition. You might be going through uh, a, a situation right now just because yourself or the people who are related to you subjected themselves into ungodly laws. Yeah. And today, you can just go free. You know, the Bible says Jesus came to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. We might have been taken free, uh, captive by the power of sin, by the power of the devil, through culture. But today, through your own decision, because you have authority over your life, you have authority to say no to what has been going on in your life. You have authority to change the course of your life. Just like Jabez did. You know, he was called Jabez and, and his life uh, was painful until he subjected himself to the law of God and prayed to God that, oh, that my life would be blessed. Mm. That you can do also today. And that you can do by subjecting yourself under the law of God. Mm. Because the law of God is supreme and it's powerful. Mm. So let me pray with you. Mm. Uh, if, if you really want to go free, you have a condition, just close your eyes and then put your hand on your chest mm. and subject your life under the law of God. Mm. Let's pray. However, Father, Lord, I thank you for our viewers. Thank you for the, our listeners, Lord. And they've heard your word. We just want to pray for them. Lord God Almighty, if there are those who have been uh, under the subjection of ungodly laws and covenants, and the repercussions are being dire on their lives, Lord, we want to pray this hour as they subject themselves to the law of God, just like Jabez, Lord, we pray that may you turn their situations, may you turn their captivity into freedom in the name of Jesus. Mm. We break every cultural bondages, mm. we break every satanic yokes and, 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 and covenants, mm. we declare freedom in mm. the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we pray that may your blessing through Jesus Christ May your blessing through Jesus Christ come upon my listener and your peace and freedom so be their portion. For we pray this, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Many thanks, Pastor Kiprop and Pastor Judy, for allowing God to use you in a powerful way. And for our online viewers, we are happy that you tuned in. You can always get our previous recordings by subscribing to our YouTube page at CTAM. 
Eldoret TV on Facebook. Just go to Sitam Eldoret and you can get the previous recording. It was nice having you. We are praying that the Lord may bless you and, and keep you. Bye from us for now.